he's cooking like this. And he's getting an assist. The slam dunk. Bring in Saga City. He's been on awesome. He is bringing it right here. The return of the New York kids. RJ Barrett and Emmanuel quickly returned to action against LeBron James and the Los Angeles Lakers and breathed life into this Raptors offense. Barrett put up 28 points and quickly put up 22. And the Raptors put up a good fight in the first half. But in the second half, it was all the Lakers who dominated the undersized Raptors. Uh, it was it was great to see them out there. Uh, both of them enjoyed uh, being on the court uh, and just being able to do do what they love to do um, obviously both of them they had a really good uh, first half RJ with 19 points and and uh, four assists and uh, quick with 13 points and uh, five assists uh, um, they, they they brought some new energy there and uh, very happy to see them back Ultimately, Barrett and Quickly were only a minus eight on the night where the Raptors lost by 17. So they positively impacted the game. It's just that outside of those two, they didn't get much help. Grady Dick had some impressive moments and both he and Kelly Olenek poured in 14 points. The main issue was Toronto's defense though, and it will continue to be that way. And so 14 straight losses, the second longest streak in franchise history, longest since 1998. Eight. I was three years old. It's been a while. Still, somehow, like a maniac, I find reasons to be optimistic. I've been fascinated by how Grady's newfound experimentation will work alongside these guys returning to the lineup. And on the first day, it looked pretty good. Ah, it's good to have RJ back. These transition head to head passes are great, and Grady made him pay on that one. The amount of attention that Emmanuel quickly gets when he's on the ball is also great. And a guy like Grady, who is great at, you know, diving and cutting into open spaces of the defense, will also be able to feast. And not to mention that in transition, quickly is bursty himself, makes a beautiful pass here to Grady, who knocks down the corner three. And so there were a couple of moments here, both off ball, on ball. Grady was able to create off of advantages that RJ and IQ created. And so that's something that I'm looking forward to. It's like, how does how does all of this usage that Grady got over the last month with all of these injuries, how does that work when you throw RJ and IQ back in there? Hey, how does it work when you throw Scotty back in there next season or Yakka back in there next season? Clearly, his role is going to change from what it was the last month. And so how he's able to put the piece together and do it in a more finite role in a more efficient role in a role that's like instead of 20 shots a game he's getting a maximum of 10 shots a game i think i believe today was 12 and like you're only getting like eight or nine shots right maybe you get 10 or 12 on any given night if you're hot and you're filling it and so how are you going to maximize those opportunities that you do get and I'm just interested to see how it looks moving forward. Really, that's that's all it is with Grady and RJ and IQ coming back. Also, um, it's just good to have RJ and IQ back and in the lineup, clearly having fun, clearly, you know, getting back into the basketball shape and whatnot. RJ didn't skip a beat. That man knows how to score the basketball. Just constant rim pressure, getting downhill, made a couple of his threes. Same thing with quickly. The pull-up shooting was just like a breath of fresh air for the Raptors, and they were just able to dominate that way. Uh, still working through the quirks. You could see even in the first quarter, they were like, oh, wow, so these, these good players are back with us. We need to work through. They kind of had gotten through. They were going through the motions a little bit. Not a little bit, a lot over the last two weeks. And so when you throw RJ and quickly back in there, it's like, oh, hey, we're a pretty good team. Let's move the ball. Let's bang, bang, boom. And like it works. It The Raptors played well offensively in the first half. It's the defense that really made them struggle in that second half. And honestly, man, like when you don't have Jakob, when you don't have Scotty, this team is just not going to be a good defensive team. It's just it is what it is. That's something they need to address in the summer, getting good defenders to be able to round out the supporting cast. Name of the game. That's how the Raptors need to build out the rest of this roster and figure it out, how they can have these two-way presences. Because right now, between RJ, between Quickly, Grady, uh, a lot of guys who have like certain questions to them defensively, not saying that they're doomed or whatever, but like they still have questions looming defensively. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much the game. Insane. I was there today. And it was just insane to see the reaction fans had for LeBron. I understand it's LeBron, it's the Lakers, 
People love LeBron. People love the Lakers. Hey, I love LeBron. And I also, for a very long time in my life, enjoyed the Lakers. I know it's a surprise. I know you're going to be like, how dare you? You're a bastard for liking the Lakers. Little backstory here. Kobe Bryant, one of my favorite players of all time, he got me into the game of basketball. One of the very first reasons I got into the game of basketball, I believe I was watching the 2002 NBA Finals with my cousin. He was a big Kobe fan at the time. And, you know, I kind of fell in love. I was like, dude, this is awesome. This player right here, Kobe Bryant's really awesome. Very cool. The next season, I wanted my mom to take me to a Raptors game. She took me to a Raptors Lakers game. And so that was the first game I ever went to. Got to watch Kobe live. And I still remember that. It was my first, one of my first ever, it probably was my first ever Raptors game. Cause I remember that same season was the Carter season where Carter got traded and then he came back. And I, I went to the Carter game too. Cry baby, the baby bibs. I, I had a very great, couple of first experiences uh for raptors games and hey that's why i do this now it's because i love it um and yeah so so i have that affiliation and also you know i came in and started watching basketball at the same time lebron got into the league i know basketball only as lebron james's domain i i started watching it religiously in 2003 that man started dominating in 2003 and so i understand the affection of an NBA fan base to, towards the Lakers, towards LeBron James. I've been to games before, Raptors games before, multiple Raptors games. I think like probably like three or four Raptors games where LeBron has came to Toronto. It has never been like this. <laughs> Not once in my life. I've seen him in Cleveland. I've seen him in Miami. I've seen him in Cleveland again. I don't think I had seen him in Los Angeles. But regardless, never have seen like that amount of embrace of LeBron. Uh, and like, look, man, again, all time level player nearing the end of his career. Maybe the crowd kind of got that feeling where it's like, hey, we never know how many more games LeBron is going to play in Toronto. And you know what? You're right. Like, you don't know how many more games LeBron will play in Toronto. That being said, damn, pretty crazy to watch. Pretty crazy to hear. Anyways, that's just a side tangent. Um, doesn't really matter towards anything right now. The Raptors have lost 14 in a row. They play Minnesota tomorrow night, second night of a back-to-back. -back. There will likely be some resting. I'd imagine they don't want to play RJ and quickly on the second night of a back-to-back. -back. They likely lose that game uh, in Minnesota. And then they play Milwaukee, I believe, on Friday. And then on Sunday, it's the Washington Wizards. And the reason that Washington Wizards game is important, I'll tell you, because if they lose that, that is 17 losses in a row. That is tying the franchise record set in 1998 for franchise losses in a row. That means that on Wednesday or whenever, Tuesday, where they play the Indiana Pacers, Pascal Siakam coming to town, last home game of the season, it could be for the historic 18. I'm just saying, might be a crazy couple of days in Raptors world if they break their own losing streak franchise record in the 2023-2024 season. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, better times are ahead. Be optimistic. Enjoy yourselves. It's almost over. <laughs> and uh, I hope you guys have a good one, okay? Subscribe to Raptors Republic as you guys usually do. Read the work Raptors Republic does as you usually do. Uh, and I'll see you guys later. Take care. Bye-bye.